the next obvious question would be, how do we get there? And especially how you were describing, Rob, when you want to bring all your current operations to the digital age, there's going to be a lot of processes to be automated and a lot of systems to be integrated. And especially also with the increased pace of change of the market, as you describe with COVID now, for example, companies will have to constantly respond to new market requirements and also understand where the value of their digital transformation project is going in real time and scale new initiatives within weeks rather than months. So the next question to you would be how to drive digital transformation at scale and at speed. Also, maybe looking at more traditional approaches and then at emerging technology helping us out here. Well, well, I guess I can start with how you don't do it. And, And the way you don't do it is you don't do it the way we have approached digital transformation to date, right? So so there's there's a couple of patterns that we're well aware of um, in, in terms of automation. They're well they're well worn. They're very well proven. It, it's how we've always done business. And, and these are things like writing custom code. Bring in you know bring in all the IT experts. Hire all the great computer science experts from from the nearest university. Um, you know bring bring in the large you know systems integrators and, and have them cut huge amounts of of code in order to transform. Um, you know, that was one pattern that we that we always worked with. And and there's a couple of problems. One is it's too slow. And two, there just aren't available computer science experts to to hire. You you know, if you can find them, you you know, you, you may not be able to afford them. And the sheer scale that we're talking about is too high. Um, you know, there's the old BPM model come in and do, you know, six or eight months of analysis, you know, you know, build software applications for another six or eight months roll it out and and those are useful those those will provide some value but we're talking about something fundamentally different we're talking about hundreds or potentially thousands of processes if, if we ask organizations how many processes you have that are still dependent on paper the number is 77 percent. 77 percent are still pushing paper around their organization and i don't even know if that's as shocking as the fact that 63 percent of processes take dependencies on spreadsheets and email um, this is a huge number, and, and we have to think about things differently. So what do we think about when we think about doing things differently? Well, we think about low code, which fundamentally will allow us to do it faster um, and more efficiently, but it's also more adaptable when you need to make changes very, very rapidly. Um, and, um, and, and and that's probably not even the greatest value. Probably the greatest value is, is you bring that automation, you bring that ability to drive efficiency and probably more importantly, innovation, and you get it out closer to your users, to your business people that understand the business, understand the art of the possible, and you begin to become, they begin to become partners in your automation strategy. Are are you giving them the keys to the car? Are you letting them drive by themselves? Maybe over time, that's the answer for for many. That's, That's a journey that they're going on. But at a very minimum, I can develop software faster and can I bring those that really, truly understand my business much, much closer to the development cycle? And I can build things faster. I can build them smaller. And, and I can really start to address that long tail of applications. I mean, if we want to draw a comparison, a business user that can build a spreadsheet could probably code in low code. So, you know, so you can start to now see the possibility of saying we can have really wide scale automation and, and really drive transformation at scale. So that's very good news already. We normally don't tend to see everyone immediately uh, adopting a new technology, despite the benefits you've also just described. So how do you see that with low-code? How well do you see low-code platforms being adopted across the world and also across different industries? Well, in our last software survey, which which was pre-COVID, we were pushing past 50% adoption for low code technologies. And, and that's a pretty high number, right? That, that indicates yeah, that this is becoming a mainstream uh, mainstream technology. We, we had made the bet a long time ago that low code and, and digital process automation as a companion technology were going to move into, into the mainstream in terms of everyone's portfolio for software development. Um, but then came COVID, right? So, you know, we saw this very, very distinct pattern in COVID that when processes broke, when people didn't know what to do because they weren't recognizing revenue, they weren't serving customers, they weren't able to get those you know business loans approved, 
um, that they quickly moved to what they had in their portfolio. And quite often that was low code. So the 50 plus percent of folks who were already invested in low code, they began to double down. They began to use it much more effectively, but probably more importantly, much more strategically. So it wasn't situational anymore. It became something that they said, well, this is going to become part of our mainstream portfolio. And then, of course, we saw a huge adoption with the organizations that weren't um, already invested in it. So, so we think this is happening. Um, we think the transformation has accelerated dramatically over the course of the last year as a result of COVID as a forcing function. And we think it has been you know, very much a proving point for low code as a technology that you can build not only things quickly, but things that are mission critical, things that are highly scaled, you know, things that are that are directly supporting the strategic objectives of my company. As a matter of fact, there's really an, actually an interesting side note that I want to make, which is that when, when we cut out those 50 percent of folks that were using low code and we isolated them, we found that those software development shops were far more likely to be using to be driving innovation through software than the folks who were completely focused on traditional development techniques. Yeah, that's also very interesting to know. It's just uh, yeah, amazing how how this how the market shaped and how companies really see true value in those in low code and emerging technologies. So it's good to hear that the adoption level is actually already quite high and the market handles are quite mature already.